There's a distinct sound that uh, kind of emanates from the stadium where Mississippi State football plays, and that sound, of course, is the sound of the cowbells ringing by Bulldog fans. It's a distinct sound, and regardless of what the SEC tries to do, or more so than that, the NCAA, and trying to silence the cowbells, Mississippi State fans will not have it. They still get the cowbells into the stadiums, and we certainly don't want to silence the cowbell. Justin Sutton joins us today. He's our insider here, going to give us some great insight into Mississippi State football. And he writes for, let me get the letters straight here. That's a long <laughs> list of them there, F-W-T-C-T. -T. It's for whom the cowbell tolls on the SB Nation platform. Justin, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, Mark, glad to be here with you, and good job. You got them all in order. Bud. <laughs> <laughs> I had to write them down. I read them off. So we've got a 7-6 and six football team from 2013, Justin, uh, a team that's sandwiched in there with Texas A&M and Bama and LSU and Ole Miss and Auburn. Of course, right. can't forget about the Tigers right there in the SEC West. Didn't look like they were going to make postseason play, had a nice stretch run, got that huge win in overtime in the Egg Bowl, and probably had one of the more impressive showings in bowl games, taking on a Conference USA champion in Rice, winning that game handily, 44-7. to So 7-6 and six doesn't sound that impressive, but it finished off really well for the Bulldogs. Your thoughts on 2013 and what the fans take from this past season? Yeah, 2013, Mark, pretty crazy year for the Bulldogs on so many levels. Uh, a year that you could say had some frustrations to it, a year that you could say had some things that just made you – uh, very happy had that you didn't expect. Uh, the loss to Auburn, I think, stung a lot of Bulldog fans early. Uh, Mississippi State lost that game in the closing seconds to the Tigers, and of course when you watch the Tigers go on to win a national championship, you're thinking, wow, we're right there with those guys. How can we not find a way to pull out a win there? Uh, you have some injuries start mounting up, the, the situation with Dak Prescott and, and his mother passing away, and you know, then you start thinking, well, maybe we're not even going to make a bowl game this year. Then the way the team rallies to win against Arkansas, the third-string quarterback, true freshman, Damian Williams, having to come in the game, uh, make some key plays down the stretch to pick up Mississippi State's first win in the state of Arkansas. And then that same freshman having to play most of the Egg Bowl and really playing well enough for the team to win with the defense doing what they were doing, except for a special teams blunder. And then Dak Prescott coming in and sealing the game late in the closing stages. Get six and six. You felt good. You got to a bowl game. I think Mississippi State fans are pretty excited going into the uh, into the 2014 season. I think they're going to be fired up and ready to go with that. Well, Justin, you mentioned the quarterback situation. That seems pretty clear cut at this point, but it certainly wasn't at this point last season. Tyler Russell had a nice junior season. 24 right. touchdown passes led this team to the Gator Bowl. Uh, Dak Prescott, though, a much different type of quarterback. Russell, the pocket passer. Prescott gives you the legs and the dual threat presence. Uh, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, it might have been difficult trying to decide who was going to be the quarterback and determine the offensive structure and flow because they're so different. And then Damian Williams, I was really impressed when he stepped in against Alabama. And you look at the, the stat sheet, I believe he went over 5, but he threw mm -hmm. a couple balls right on the money in a close football game where Mississippi State was hanging tough there in the fourth quarter. So it looks like it's Prescott and then Williams, if you need him, who – who scored that game-winning touchdown, like you mentioned, against Arkansas in overtime. So your assessment of the quarterback situation coming into 14? Hey, going to 2014, without a doubt, that Prescott is the man now in Starkville, uh, junior quarterback. He had a fantastic year last year, really surprised some folks, I think. And barring anything amazing, he'll be the man for the next two years in Starkville. I think a good thing for Mississippi State, they've got some talented players coming in, a guy like Elijah Staley who's committed to Mississippi State. Of course, he has to sign still in February. We know how that, we know how that always works with signing day. But you get a guy like uh, Elijah Staley in, that would be good for the future. But I think what Mississippi State can do now in 2014 with Damian Williams having played significant action as a true freshman, I think the Bulldogs feel very comfortable with him being the backup quarterback to Dak Prescott now. So you don't have this need or this urge or maybe this thought about going ahead and not redshirting somebody like Staley. If you want to redshirt him now, I think Mississippi State has the flexibility to do that in 2014 with the quarterback situation. So I think that works out pretty good for the Bulldogs. But Dak Prescott will be the man. You could just see it. Tyler Russell had a great career at Mississippi State, but the offense just flows better under Dak Prescott. It's, it's made for a quarterback like Dak Prescott with his talent. So without a doubt, barring any kind of injury or anything crazy, Dak Prescott will be the man in 2014. So Prescott's back. That's huge. We'll talk about uh, the other returnees because there's a long list of, like you say, very young but experienced uh, talent coming back. But let's look at some of the losses. There's not many, but one is huge. 
very impactful. We don't talk a lot about offensive linemen, or some people don't. I like to bring that into play because <laughs> those are the guys that make it happen. And Gabe Jackson was one of the best in the SEC, one of the best in the country, will be a first-round draft pick. So besides Jackson, some of those key losses uh, that uh, have left this program. Yeah, huge, both figuratively and literally. We talk about Gabe Jackson, the big offensive lineman. Uh, Mr. State, like we said, Tyler Russell, uh, talented quarterback. He's going, I don't know how much of an impact that really has in some ways, which seems weird to say you got a guy, one of the top passers ever, and you don't feel a big impact, but because it really wasn't going to be his type of team, his type of offense anymore. Uh, you switch over to the defensive side of the football. Nico Whitley had been a, an amazing safety for Mississippi State, a guy who I don't know if any Bulldog could have their final play of their career be any more amazing other than what he did, the Egg Bowl stripping Bo Wallace on his way into the end zone and forcing a fumble to preserve that game. Now, he'll be a big loss in the secondary that I think Mississippi State fans will notice more and more. Uh, to me, that's the two big ones on each side of the ball. I, I, I like Deontay Skinner as well. Uh, Mississippi State will miss him, uh, what he's done as a linebacker. But all in all, Mississippi State's got to be pretty excited. Lots of folks coming back. Uh, along the defensive line, you might miss Danico Autry. But there are some young guys in the wings who might can step up and, and take his place because he never really had the impact that Mississippi State fans, I think, expected him to have when he came out of East Mississippi Community College. So something like 17 out of 22 starters coming back. Who are some of those guys that you're you're very excited to see maybe grow and develop into impact players in the SEC? Oh, yeah. I mean, the guy that everybody has to be most excited about off the bat, Dak Prescott, the quarterback for the Bulldogs. Everybody wants to see where he can go, what he can accomplish uh, going into 2014. High expectations on him. Jamie on Lewis, the wide receiver. Had a fantastic year for Mississippi State. Really started to develop a good relationship, it looked like, with Dak Prescott. He'll be someone to keep an eye on, a wide receiver as well. You switch over to the, to the defensive side of the football, Benardrick McKinney. He had considered maybe going ahead and going pro after his sophomore year this year. He's going to stick around. Uh, you, he's definitely an all-SEC caliber player. He should grow and develop some more. The Mississippi State secondary, extremely young last year. Guys like DeVez Calhoun playing. Justin Cox never really got his, his groove under him after having a good year, a good couple years in the junior college system. That would be two names to watch out for in the secondary. The defensive line, pretty young players on there. Everybody's going to want to see how much does this, uh, this Chris Jones develop uh, as a Mississippi State defensive lineman. You've got some other guys. And A.J. Jefferson, uh, Preston Smith, how did those guys go and develop? Mm -hmm. uh, very young Mississippi State team. I think they could be very excited and have a whole lot of good things working for them going in the future. Now, Ladarius Perkins is a running back who was huge for this team in 2012 with 1,000 yards. I don't know if there were some injury factors uh, mm -hmm. that affected his play in 2013, but he had to share carries. Uh, how much is he going to be missed, and what's the running back situation look like coming up? No, great question. Ladarius Perkins never in 2013 quite seemed like the running back that he had been in the past. Uh, he just always seemed a little slow, and he's coming through some injuries and never quite seemed to ever get going and still had a, and still had a good year for Mississippi State. Uh, you look at that backfield right now, there are tons of talent in that backfield. you got Josh Robinson, who's very talented. you got Ashton Shumpert, uh, who didn't play all that much as a true freshman. And I think some fans are actually a little frustrated that he didn't play more once the red shirt was burned on him because he showed great flashes of talent. Uh, you've got good players coming into Mississippi State as well. Aries Williams coming in from, from West Point. He could challenge for some playing time. In fact, the, the backfield's gotten so deep that some players like Derek Milton have decided to transfer out of Mississippi State because they figure they may never see much playing time. I think, I think the running back position is going to have to sort itself out. I would say Josh Robinson's probably your your early favorite, but Ashton Schumpert should be right there too. Um, but really, it's gonna be that's gonna be a fun battle to watch as they go through the spring and into the fall practices to see who really emerges as the big running threat out of the backfield from Mississippi State. And Justin, with 17 starters coming back, you wouldn't think that there would be that many position battles, but is there any other unit on the field or a couple units on the field that you're eyeing to see who could win jobs? Because, of course, as we both know in football, especially competition's huge and competition's right. a healthy thing. Yeah, I would look definitely at the wide receiver position early on, too. Jamie on Lewis, you can write him in and, and ink. Barring injury, Jamie on Lewis is going to be a starter. But then you've got a lot of other wide receivers that just have not really ever solidify themselves. A, a kid like Joe Morrow has all kinds of talent, but for whatever reason hasn't ever quite put it all together on the field yet for the Bulldogs. Darunya Wilson, uh, a kid hasn't played much football in his life, kind of just got into football late. He's been a basketball guy most of his life. It'll be interesting to see what he can do uh, for Mississippi State. He could very well be a, a breakout kind of guy that you know had a good 2013, but really going to step up and be big in 2014. So I think it'll be interesting to watch how the wide receiver positions shake out. 
Uh, you're going to have some openings at the linebacker core. you got some very good linebackers from Mississippi State, Beniquez Brown, Richie Brown, guys who started stepping up late in the year. Uh, they could pat- battle for a lot of playing time. And then just some young guys along the defensive line who's going to step up. Uh, could some of these younger players step up maybe at the end positions? You're going to have a lot of competition in a lot of spots, and I think that's great. you got, you got a young team that has a decent amount of experience, and they, their backups are pretty good too. So you're going to see a lot of pushing and competition for the Bulldogs. Yeah, I don't think there's any question, Justin, that the SEC West is the toughest division in college football. I don't think there's any argument there. And if anything, it's getting tougher with Auburn bouncing back from O and A to go to the national championship game. <laughs> Who knows what Brett Bielema has in store in Arkansas? Maybe he gets that thing turned around. So there are no soft touches in the SEC West. Uh, Mississippi, I think, unless you really follow recruiting and know where the numbers come from and and take into consideration the lack of population there, Mississippi has some of the best talent in the country per Mm -hmm. capita. I think there's been some recent studies show that among NFL players, if you're looking at per capita, sure, the volumes in California and Florida and Texas and maybe Ohio and Pennsylvania to a lesser degree, but per capita, the talent in Mississippi is exceptional. Um, what does Mississippi State look like in regards to the way the class is shaping up at this point? As you mentioned a few minutes ago, the, the, the names are not on the dotted line, so nothing's assured right now, but, but how does the class shape up at this point? Yeah, Mississippi State, you know, I call this more of maybe a workman kind of class they got coming in in 2014. Some very good, solid players. Nobody that's just, you know, mind-blowing, so to speak, uh, right now. A couple of players I'm very excited about, Aries Williams, the, out of Moss Point, Missis- or West Point, Mississippi, rather, the, uh, the running back. He's going to be a fantastic talent. Uh, a name that really jumped up for a lot of folks last year, but if you had seen him in the years earlier, you know he's very talented. Uh, Jesse Jackson, a wide receiver out of Petal, Mississippi. Uh, he's 6'1", 195 pounds. He'll get a little bit bigger. He could be a big guy. Uh, for the Bulldogs. you got an athletic player like Jamal Graham looking to come to Mississippi State. And, and, and so those are some guys that, that have said they're coming to the Bulldogs. I think you have to watch out for it and say, hey, they could be really big. And, but that's not all. You've got uh, a lot of other guys who could be big impacts from Mississippi State uh, that the Bulldogs really like to get none bigger maybe than Marlon Humphrey out of Hoover High, you know, the Friday Night Lights folks, and everybody loves everybody that loves high school football knows about Hoover. Uh, you can see Marlon Humphrey decide to come to the Bulldogs. If he decides to do that, that'd be a big pickup uh, from Mississippi State as well. Dan Mullen has really emphasized dominating the state of Mississippi in recruiting, and I think if he wants to win, he he has to continue to do that. But he does have to start getting outside. You get a guy like Humphreys in, and that becomes big for Mississippi State. You go to one of the big, prominent high schools that play football in the country, and you get a recruit from there. That'd be big for the Bulldogs. I think it would help him recruiting uh, in state and out of state as well. So it's gonna be interesting to see. Uh, who all finally puts their names on that dotted line here in about uh, four weeks from now. Hey, Justin, I'm going to go all the way back to like the early 90s when Jackie Sherrill was there. This program seems to have settled into a situation, regardless who the coach is, and and I know that there have been a couple big highs Mm -hmm. and a couple bad lows for this program, but generally this is a program that you expect to beat everybody that they're supposed to beat within the SEC, so it's anywhere from three to four to five wins in conference, and then they generally beat up on a weak non-conference schedule, although they took on Oklahoma State this past right. season. So they're scheduling some tougher teams, as everybody is looking to do with the playoffs coming up. Um, but this is a program that usually wins seven or eight football games, and Dan Mullins in that same mold. In a lot of ways, he's progressed the program. I don't want to shortchange him there. Uh, again, they're getting to bowl games, and they're winning bowl games. So well, where do you think the the fan base stands in regards to Mullen's performance as a coach, and what are realistic expectations, and what are the true expectations <laughs> of this Mississippi State fan base? Well, hey, we all remember fan, the short for fanatics, right, Mark? Uh, you, you look at things with Dan Mullen. I'll, I'll say this. The fact that people were getting antsy with Mullen at a six-win season last year, I think says wonders for what Dan Mullen has done with the programs. You go back to the to the late 90s, 98 when Mississippi State won the SEC West, 99 when that team was actually probably a better squad, uh, started off the amazing undefeated run, suffered late losses to Arkansas and Alabama mid injuries, still had a great season. Uh, even 2000, another quality team that just couldn't quite keep it going because of injuries. Mississippi State football ha- hasn't been that high. Uh, you know, after that, and you have to look 50 years in the past to find the time Mississippi State's been there. You go through the Croom era, and that was just disastrous for a lot of Mississippi State fans, barring the one trip to the Liberty Bowl. Dan Mullins come in there, he's just brought life into the program. Fans are believing in the program. They're wanting to see growth. 
He had a couple of big years early, and it felt like the program maybe kind of stalled out a little bit. But I think coming out of 2013, I think Bulldog fans feel tons of momentum. You saw what this offense could look like with Dak Prescott. This team hung tough with Alabama, hung tough with A&M. They run a, won a tough game against Arkansas, fought and won an Egg Bowl that was going to be a tough win for them. They blew Rice out in the Liberty Bowl. And I think going into 2014, the expectations are high. I think if the Bulldogs walk out with anything less than eight wins, it will feel somewhat like a letdown of a season because they've got an easier break in the SEC schedule than what they always sometimes have. Uh, maybe not some of the same tough opponents. So I think if you're a Mississippi State fan, you really like to see eight wins. A lot of folks talking nine wins, ten wins, those kind of things. And maybe, it may be, but let's, let's shoot for eight or nine and then try to build off of that. All right. He is Justin Sutton. He writes some great stuff for whom the cowbell – oh, man, I knew I was going to blow this, Justin. <laughs> for whom the cowbell tolls on the SB Nation network. So Mississippi State fans, SEC fans, join him there. Write some great stuff on the SB Nation platform. Justin, we appreciate the insight. Great job. And uh, I love – see, I'm a guy that's trying to soak it up from all angles on all these teams, and I, I love to hear the, the in-depth – uh, information on the personnel and the coaching situations there at uh, each school. So thanks so much for running things down there with the Bulldogs. Hey, Mark, anytime. Glad to do it. And, hey, let's get back together sometime. Definitely.